my name is Amy Long, this is Ron Nakamoto, and we are going to be looking at the yellow belt techniques as taught from white belt to yellow belt. There should be a difference that we will be noting throughout the series of the differences between when you're first learning it and how to teach a white belt to yellow belt versus a more advanced. The techniques should look different as you go along. Uh, the first technique is called delayed sword. It's the first technique generally taught to white belts, and I'm going to go over the concepts that, that are in it. Uh, it is generally done, we teach it for a, a right hand lapel grab, uh, right hand to my left lapel. It can also be done for a push, a step through punch, anything that is coming in that general direction. First we're going to show what it looks like as a white belt would be doing it, and then we'll explain the concepts. The grab comes, you're going to step back, block, kick, chop. On the other side, see it looks like here, stepping back, block, kick, chop. What we'd like to talk about in this technique is that with all areas in Kempo, there are three zones that you want to get covered, height, width, and depth. For any technique, you want to cover at least two of those zones, preferably three, when you're doing it. So, when the grab comes, first thing we're going to do when we're teaching yellow belts, we're going to step back with the left foot, and foot into a right neutral bow, teaching to establish their base. At the same time that you land, discussing marriage of gravity, gravity plus force equals power, one of the three power principles, you're going to, at the same time, do an inward block, knocking, hopefully, knocking your opponent's hand off. Left hand is going to come up as a check. I generally teach the lower belts, think of this as waving. It is a positional check, but waving reminds the students to uh, have an active hand, have it be there, have it ready for action, and push their attention on their hand instead of it being out in la-la land. Uh, with the inward block, we have checked the opponent's height, hopefully depth as they're potentially coming in, possibly width, depending how far they, they spin. From here, teaching white belts is going to come up into a cat stance, which as we know is a transitional stance. Snap kick to the groin, causing a reaction. Make sure you're teaching white belt students to react as you land, torquing out from point of origin to the, an outward chop, right outward chop to the side of your opponent's neck, going through your opponent. Um, one of the concepts that we go over in our class is to go through, not to. So, but as a white belt, we want to show them that it goes just, just past the two, or the through point. Just past the two, just into the through. So, basically, as a white belt, your, your students want to be learning to step back, establish their base, work on marriage of gravity, and also to land at the same time again, working marriage of gravity and their timing. As you move through the ranks, it should no longer look like block, cat stance, snap kick, plant forward, and chop. It, it can uh, start to blend together as you go along. A little more advanced would be then going one, two, three as you land, or you can just blow the whole thing together and go And that is what we have for delayed sword.